Good morning. morning. And may the Lord be with you. you. Welcome to Peace. I'm Pastor Olers. It is my pleasure to be here today uh, to lead you in worship. And especially today is uh, a very special day. It's Transfiguration of our Lord. And I consider that one of our special services because it is of what it uh, means for us, what it also meant for the disciples. And uh, they didn't really have a real good idea of just who this guy was. So Jesus said, you know, I need to show them. And he did. And we see him not in the same way, but through the gospel, we realize that he is human as well as God. And then the disciples also had that chance to do it as well, see him uh, as he really is. Also, one other thing I want to mention is that an area of sadness for us, and that is this war that is going on uh, in Ukraine. And I wanted to make sure that as we worship today, we thank God for how lucky we are to be living where we are so that we are not dealing with this very same thing. A lot of people are suffering right now. Many people are being killed for no reason at all, just because of pure aggression by another country. And as we worship today, let us thank God for everything that he gives to us and also that we would pray for concern for them as well. Let us all begin our worship together as we sing our opening hymn. Please stand. 
We begin this service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord, and welcome to your worship. The Lord our God is holy. The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits on his throne, let the earth shake. Great is the Lord, he is exalted over all the nations. and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. The glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on top of the mountain. The disciples fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus touched them and said, Do not be afraid. Let us then without fear confess our sins to God in sincere repentance. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we, we are, are sinners, sinners simple from earth. earth. We, we have failed to obediently conform our lives to your will in thinking, speaking, and acting. We have failed to listen to you in your word or to recognize your gracious presence with us each day to guide and direct us. We have not loved you with all our heart and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as much as we have loved ourselves. Forgive us our sins for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The father spoke to Jesus and said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. God was well pleased with Jesus' perfect life and sacrificial death on the cross and for his sake forgives us our sins. Therefore, upon your confession... I, as an ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and instead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the reading. The Old Testament reading from the Transfiguration of Our Lord is from Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 1 through 12. Here the Lord gives Moses one final view of the promised land. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah across from Jericho. 
There the Lord showed him the whole land, from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab, in the valley opposite Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all those miraculous signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. We will hear how Christ is our leader and ultimate source of hope. Therefore, holy brothers, who share in the heavenly call, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful to all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be said in the future. But Christ is faithful as a son over God's house. We are his house if we hold on to our courage and the hope of which we boast. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. The Transfiguration of Jesus. Jesus took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and told no one at the time what they had seen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us now together confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I would now like to invite our children forward for a special children's message. So come on up, kids. Good morning. You know, when I was your age, I, um, well, actually, during my whole time at home, I lived in Minnesota and I lived on a farm. And I, there I had a lot of opportunity to see uh, many different kinds of animals. We had cattle and sheep and pigs and, and uh, uh, various, various chickens, you know, things like that. But also, living out in the country, we also have an, a real opportunity to see a lot of different things, you know, like birds, and, and, uh, had, and we had a creek running through our place, and fish, and just all kinds of different things. We also uh, had a lot of insects being out in the farm and all that. And I thought one particular insect was very um, intriguing to me, and uh, that was one like this. And maybe you have seen something like that before, right? You know what it is? It's a caterpillar, right? But it is also, to me, uh, a very special kind of caterpillar. And of course, all caterpillars do something kind of special, don't they? If you know how that works. In, in the uh, summertime, they eat a lot of food, and then they, they get really big, and then in the fall, they spin a cocoon, don't they? And then over the winter, something really happens. They transform into something different. And every caterpillar is different. They, they, have, they transform into something different. And in this particular one, this one transforms into this. You know what kind of butterfly that is? It's, it, what? Yes. Yes, it's a monarch, and I think monarch butterflies are so beautiful. And uh, 
like I said, all caterpillars change into different kinds of butterflies. But what I wanted to point out was the amazing thing that happens from that to this. How can something kind of ugly like a bug like that, a worm, caterpillar, transform into something like this? Well, it only happens by the miracle of God. He's the one that actually makes all these things happen. But that kind of brings me to the story that we're going to talk about today and the transfiguration of Jesus, where, you know, we know that Jesus was born about 2,000 years ago, right? And he was a human being to people. Now, they knew he was somebody special because he could perform miracles, so he was maybe a prophet, they thought. But Jesus obviously was something much more than that. He had been training his disciples, telling them what was going to happen, and they were really struggling with this. And so he said, I need to take you, you know, Peter, James, and John up to the mountain and make a show of himself. And there he transfigures himself into who he really is. And Jesus being human is also what? He is also our Savior. He's also God. And they saw him, and they couldn't believe their eyes. But then, after that, they realized and they heard the Father, this is my son, listen to him, and they did, and they held this in their hearts until after Jesus had been crucified and rose from the dead, and then they were able to tell people, we know who this guy is, and he is, he was raised from the dead by God, he is our Savior, he is the Christ, okay, let's fold our hands and pray, and just pray after me, okay, dear Jesus, we thank you for bringing us to church today to hear more about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Let us now sing our sermon hymn.
Grace, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come here today to worship you. To pray, to hear your word spoken. And we ask that by your power of the Holy Spirit, you would open our hearts to it all, to your word, that you would lift us up, strengthen us in faith so that we may leave here to tell others about what we have heard here today so that others may know you like we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Since I'm from Las Vegas, I thought I'd point out something that I have realized about people who come to visit that city. You know, many people who come to Las Vegas, they never go any farther than the Strip, that area downtown where all the casinos are. They arrive and leave again, never knowing what else Las Vegas area has to offer. So just outside the city, to the southeast, there is Hoover Dam. And to the west of the city is Red Rock Canyon. A little further down the road to the northeast is a place called Valley of Fire. And northwest of the city, just a few miles, is an opportunity to go for a scenic drive in the mountains. Now, these are just a few of the areas outside of the city that offer an opportunity to see something that one would not expect in the desert region of Las Vegas. In mentioning various scenic places, I would like to point out there is a rather unique place in the mountains, not far from the Strip. There is a road just before you get to the town of Mount Charleston that you take across the mountain over to Lee Canyon. It's a short drive through the mountains and it provides a worthwhile investment of your time if you want to see if you want to get a change of scenery from the standard desert view that one normally sees down in the valley. There is a place along the way where you can stop in a small parking area and walk a short distance to an area that brings you to the edge of the mountain at an altitude of about 7,000 feet above sea level. Now this particular place provides an open space that, so that you can see the entire valley below and on a clear day you can see for many, many miles. Now it's a place that I have visited many times and I never get tired of looking at the awesome view. There is something very moving about standing at the top of a mountain and having an unobstructed view of entire surrounding area. It's what I call a mountaintop experience. Now, if you've ever driven in the mountains somewhere in the country, you may have experienced something like that as well. And if you did, I'm quite sure that it would leave a lasting impression upon you. I believe these mountaintop experiences, no matter where we're experiencing them, are even more special if you are a Christian. And as we are, because Christians are able to fully appreciate what we are witnessing, which is the creative hand of God. Those who believe that this is God's handiwork have a special appreciation for the beautiful scenery that is available for us throughout the entire country and actually throughout the entire world. You know, whenever our family would go on vacation, we would usually drive to our destination. Well, in part, that was done because of economic reasons, but, but Kathy and I also did this because we enjoyed the beautiful scenery along the way, wherever we would go. As we drove along, we would often pull off the road whenever we saw a sign that said, Scenic View Ahead. Maybe you've also done that as well. 
wasn't long, though, before our children were yelling in the back seat, not another one. <laughs> Apparently, they weren't quite ready to appreciate the beauty of God's creation like we were. Well, there are many places that are very scenic. It is hard to surpass the beauty and serenity that comes from being in the mountains. Jesus recognized this because he would usually withdraw to a place in the mountains to go and be alone to pray. On this particular occasion, as described to us in the Gospel reading, Jesus brought with him three of his closest disciples, Peter, James, and John. Jesus brought them along for a very special reason. Throughout history, it seems that God uses the beauty and serenity of the mountains to do something amazing for his people or to reveal, to reveal a great truth. A few examples include when Abraham was told to go sacrifice his son Isaac to test to sacrifice him on a mountain to test his faith. Now it was there that God promised Abraham that he would bless him and through his descendants of, that, that his descendants would be all, it would uh, encompass all nations of the earth and, and that through him he would be blessed. And then there was Moses who was drawn up to the mountains by a burning bush. It was there that God commissioned Moses to deliver to his people, his people from Egypt, uh, that where they were located uh, in slavery. And then there was another time that God brought Moses to the top of Mount Sinai to give him the Ten Commandments for the people of Israel to live by, for all and for all people for all time. Well, today we focus on another important mountaintop event. Jesus took three of his disciples to a secluded place in the mountains to witness something very incredible. The gospel tells us that while Jesus was praying, the appearance of his face had changed and his clothes became bright as a flash of lightning. Not only that, but uh, something else very special happened. Two men, Moses and Elijah, who had lived and died generations before, appeared with Jesus in glorious form and were talking with him. So what was the point of all this? It was obviously something very important. At this point in Jesus' ministry, he needed to show his closest disciples who he truly was. First, Jesus displayed his glory to show his disciples that he was much more than they could ever imagine. Now, Jesus did this because his disciples were struggling to understand him. They were struggling to understand his mission. Jesus was telling them that he was soon going to die for the sins of the people and that his kingdom was not of this world, but his kingdom was from heaven. So Jesus allowed them for just a moment to see him in his glorified form. He then allowed Moses and Elijah to stand with him, to stand with him in their glory to prove to his disciples that everything that they were seeing was from God. And then they heard from the Father himself as he spoke from the cloud, proclaiming that Jesus was the Son, and they were to listen to him. Well, this was a momentous occasion. It was so stunning that the disciples didn't even know how to respond. They were afraid. And what they witnessed on that day was to be kept in their hearts. Jesus had been raised from the dead. Now witnessing this event would provide additional proof that as the disciples preached to the people, as they preached that 
Jesus is truly the Son of God and that his mission was to die for the sins of the people. And because of that, that they would receive forgiveness of their sins and eternal life in heaven. You know, we may wonder why a Jesus chose to reveal himself to only three of his disciples. Why not show himself to all of them? Why not to a large group of his followers? Would it have not been beneficial for many people to witness such a wondrous sight and and then to be able to go out and tell others about him? Well, Jesus always has his reasons for what he does, which is usually the opposite of what we think that he should do. But what was very clear from Jesus' actions and the words he spoke from what we read in the Bible, Jesus wants people to believe and then to demonstrate their faith. Would we like to have a mountaintop experience to see Jesus just as he really is? I think that we would answer absolutely yes. We would love that. But Jesus provided proof to a few witnesses so that through the power of the Holy Spirit, they would proclaim his message to anyone who would listen, and then by faith they would believe it. Oh, of course, though, we know that there are many people who choose to reject this message, which is a very tragic decision. But we all know that by the power of the Holy Spirit, God gives the people the ability to believe without seeing physical proof. We do not have Jesus walking among us, but we do have the Bible, which is the very Word of God. Through the words of the gospel and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to hear and believe all that Jesus did while he was here on earth. And what we soon realize, that believing in Christ, it is not an easy path to follow. Just as the disciples and and the early Christians found out, it was very hard. They were persecuted. They were beaten. And they were killed. And they were, they were severely uh, tortured, many times driven from their homes, all in support of this new faith in Jesus. With these ever-present and very real dangers, we may begin to understand why so many people choose to turn away from the comforting message of the gospel. So what is it that separates those who believe and are willing to suffer and even die for their faith versus those who will just turn away? It is, of course, the Holy Spirit that lives in every believer. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that enables people to believe and then gives them courage to live as Christians. This same Holy Spirit is the one who gave the disciples the courage and the ability to proclaim forgiveness and salvation through Christ, even as they faced the threat of bodily harm and death everywhere they went. And even in the face of this constant danger, they did not stop. But instead, they continued forward, climbing the mountain of faith against the forces of evil, It was a difficult journey, but they succeeded in their mission because God was with them. I often think about the difficulty that the disciples faced as they witnessed their faith. We don't really seem to face the same kind of troubles that they did. But I think that we can all agree, being a Christian is not an easy road to follow. You know, more than a few years ago, I received a gift 
of a small picture that had a saying on it. I didn't like what the saying said, and I was tempted to throw it away, not once, but many times. I don't know why, but every time I passed the picture, I would stop to read it. Well, eventually I decided that I must accept what it says because it's true. Even though it is different for each of us. It was a short verse written by a man named Arthur Giederman, and it's titled, A Prophet's Proverb. And this is what it said. God's road is all uphill, but do not tire. Rejoice that we may still keep climbing higher. Well, those were the words I didn't really want to hear. What I'm focusing on is God's road is all uphill. I didn't want to hear that because the real message from that short proverb is that we as Christians will always face difficulty in this life. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to know that because we're Christians that we're going to have difficulty in this life. But it's true. But it is also clear that as we work through the adversity of life, which is much like climbing a mountain, the higher we go, the more clearly we will see the goal that God has set before us. The clearer our goal, the stronger our desire will be to reach it. Well, maybe that's the reason why Jesus took his disciples up on the mountain, to show them that the path that they must take will not be easy, but there will be a glorious finish. Well, these words are true for us as well. Our path as Christians will not be easy in this life because we are surrounded by sin and evil. But we will certainly enjoy a glorious finish, all because of what Jesus did for us. And that will be the greatest mountaintop experience of all time. Amen. Let us now honor our Lord and Savior as we offer our support through our offerings in support of this ministry.
please stand. As we go to our Lord in prayer, we especially lift up in prayer for Vicki Brown, who has still suffering with COVID, for Madison Bray, who had surgery last week on her knee and is doing well, for Melody Kingsbury, who has a medical procedure this past week, and for Jim Ugalani, uh, Ed Ugalani's brother, who fell and broke his hip in Illinois. And we also have a prayer of thanksgiving for Pastor Kobler, who is out of rehab and recovering at his home. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I would also like to add uh, another prayer for Maria for her brother, Nelson, who is in the hospital and he's waiting to go to rehab. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in prayer, your Son Jesus revealed his glory to Peter, James, and John. Grant that we also gathered in prayer would see him by faith and receive from him the redemption he has accomplished for us. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God. You established your church on earth through your son Jesus. Grant that your church will always stand firm in the truth and proclaim the message of salvation to be a beacon of hope for all who seek it. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, as your son cares faithfully for his holy church, grant us a sure confidence in him and give us faithful hearts to serve him according to the callings he has given to us. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Almighty Father, you alone establish all authority on earth. Bless those entrusted with this responsibility, both here and abroad, that they would serve with integrity and honor and for the well-being of all. And we especially ask for your hand of mercy and intercession in the war that has been begun between Russia and Ukraine. We ask that you offer protection to all the innocent people who are caught within this tragic situation. Be with them, Lord. Protect them. Grant that all division, conflict, and strife throughout the world and, and in our country would give way to unity, peace, and quietness. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. O Lord, Father of all comfort, Grant healing, comfort, and peace to all who are suffering in body and soul, especially for Vicki, Madison, Melody, for Jim, for Pastor Kobler, and for, and for Nelson. Also grant your hand of guidance to our call committee as they work together to do your will to call a pastor of your choosing to lead this congregation in the days and years to come. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember on this day the glorious manifestation of your Son's divinity on the mountain of transfiguration. Teach us to listen to Jesus and never fix our eyes on him and his innocent suffering and death for our forgiveness. By your grace and mercy, strengthen us to remain faithful in all circumstances of trial, temptation, and persecution. Preserve us to the end that we may die 
of blessed death, believing in your beloved Son, with whom you are well pleased. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. Thanks for being here, everyone. And uh, I just want to remind everybody, and you probably hear more about it, but uh, we have Lent coming up here. And uh, Ash Wednesday begins this Wednesday, where we do the imposition of ashes as part of the service. It's very special, and as communion as well. So. I would like to see everybody try to make it, if they can, to come to this very special beginning of the Lent season where we are to remember the fact that we are indeed sinners and it is a time for us to reflect upon that a bit so that we really understand what Jesus has done for us, that uh, he truly did suffer and die on, uh, on our behalf for what we have done. And, uh, and so this is the beginning of that time and then we, of course, end with a joyful experience on Easter to thank God for the wonderful blessings that we get. So I think there's also other activities like um, uh, 
but supper and all that, 5.30, so maybe you want to talk about that. I don't know. So <laughs> we'll let you do that. I just wanted to remind everybody about uh, dinner before uh, we come in for our Wednesday service. Uh, we're having uh, um, good food and luscious desserts. So we'd <laughs> love to see y'all. And that's at 5.30, right? Yes, sir. All right. And just to follow up with that, we will make it easy for you all through the Lenten season. Every Wednesday before the service, we will have a meal at 530 uh, provided by different groups. And we do still have a couple of openings if you're interested in providing a meal. One of those evenings, uh, we'd be glad to help you or just uh, just talk to one of us on the Board of Fellowship if you're interested in doing that. Maybe you've never done it before. It's really fun. So you, you might want to give it a try. So just uh, let us know if you're interested. Thank you. I think it's a really a wonderful opportunity for fellowship. I, I love that um, opportunity to eat together and stay for worship afterwards. So, Morning. Uh, the call committee will be meeting tomorrow evening to go over the uh, list of candidates that we got about a week and a half ago. Um, so we do ask for your continued prayers uh, today and especially tomorrow as we will be meeting then to try to narrow down that list to the last couple uh, for us to actually do the face-to-face uh, -face interviews with. So uh, we do ask for your prayers um, and we will be meeting tomorrow afternoon. So just as a reminder for the elders. Thank you. Any other announcements? Go in peace. Serve the Lord.